In the end, the Nexperia question is a question of semiconductor supply and semiconductor manufacturing. And I was fortunate to be able to quickly get an interview with the legendary Ralf Higelke from TDK, who is also running an excellent newsletter on all kinds of wide band gap semiconductor technology. So without much further ado, let's look at what Ralph and I have been discussing. Okay, can you can you hear me? Yes, Ralph, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh. And I also Fantastic. see the recording. It's a pleasure that you have been able to come here so quickly today. Please tell us a bit more about you and yourself first. So um, I'm Ralph and I'm in, in power electronics now for nearly 30 years and uh, starting as a as a design engineer for power supplies and then in 2000 i switched over to uh, a trade fair magazine uh, or trade magazines as an editor where i covered uh, power electronics and white band gaps semiconductors since 2003 so more than 20 years of wide band gap semiconductors. Um, and uh, today I'm with TDK Electronics as a technical specialist in the corporate communications department. Perfect. Thank you so much for your answer and thank you for finding the time. Let's get started. The first thing, from a technical point of view, do you think China has the ability to resume producing the semiconductors, which are currently made by Nexperia Netherlands domestically? And if yes, how quickly? Um, well, uh, the chips that are manufactured in Europe by Nexperia uh, are, uh, can easily be be produced in China. Uh, these are standard chips uh, all along, and they have, but also uh, GAN and SIG. But uh, this is uh, already uh, when you look at um, at uh, Inner Science and other silicon carbide companies, uh, this could could easily be done within China. This is not not a big topic from my point of view. And how long do you think it would take them approximately to get started? I think uh, with a second gun, this is immediately possible and a standard uh, products is is uh, also be done in in uh, in a year or so. It's, it's not a, a, a difficult task. Okay, and if we turn it around to the other side, how difficult do you think will it be for Netherlands and Xperia to find a new packaging partner? Um, th that's the more pressing question, and uh, a lot of people are looking at that. Um, I think uh, the, it's a question of capacity. Who, ha who has capacity? Which OSET? Uh, and they, but they are all in in Far East, uh, Taiwan, Malaysia, Vietnam, uh, the Philippines. So uh, who can ramp up uh, and and give um, the the volume uh, that uh, Nexperia uh, needs now? And and this is the pressing question. I cannot uh, give an. Uh, an answer, but I think this could also take uh, at least uh, a couple of months to uh, a year to ramp up uh, these uh, facilities.
And do you see other vendors? I mean, Texas Instruments, for example, they used to make all these famous yellow books on logic gates. I still have a few. <clears throat> do you think that they will jump in or do you think this is not going to happen? Oh, this this is perfectly uh, uh, right. Uh, I, uh, on semi Infineon, Texas Instruments, uh, analog devices, they are all doing these kinds of of chips, um, so they could jump in. It's a, a question of qualification. Are they uh, internally qualified by the tier ones and the OEMs here in Europe and in the US? That is is the big question. And um, what I think um, uh, every every engineer normally uh, does. Uh, uh, a qualification of at least a second source. Uh, but uh, in the end, when it comes then to production, always uh, the lowest price wins. And uh, so uh, the, the pur purchasing uh, people do not have a lock on a, on the second source. They rely on one source. And if then they come in trouble, uh, like uh, we have now with Nixperia, then everybody is alert and uh, doesn't know uh, w what to do. And and also um, when you look at on on semi Texas Instruments uh, ADI and all the others, they also have to ramp up uh, their production. So the, uh, how quickly can they fill this gap? That's also uh, a pressing question to me. That's very interesting for your analysis. Let's move on to the next step. I mean, I know the peak cycle in semiconductors, it always is with the delayed fab capacity, overstock, understock. But I mean, we are all old guys, me especially, you see the gray hair if I would have a better webcam. I can remember the time, basically before SGS Thompson's legendary CEO, who recently passed away, when semiconductors basically were just a, how we say in Austria, an Arswart on the back of the defense establishment. And they didn't need to make a profit. It was just something which was there for national national security reasons. Do you think we are going to see a return to these times or not? Um, that, that's a, a political question. I, I have no idea of that, but I think um, at the end of the day, um, a company needs to make a profit. That, that's, uh, the, the shareholders are looking for profit at the end of the day. And until uh, this, uh, uh, these um, companies, uh, semiconductor companies, are not owned by the state, uh, but privately held, then uh, the sh uh, shareholders are looking for profit. That's that's the uh, very basic uh, 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 economic principle. I want to I, I want as an investor a return on my invest on that. And so therefore, uh, I do not see that uh, these uh, times will come back. That's some good information. I mean, I was worried that we'd have to fight in the, you know, when the developer boards cost like hundreds of dollars each. But if we now look specifically at the sick and the gun, which is your field of expertise, where you have this lovely newsletter, which I, by the way, recommend everybody who's watching this to sign up for. But do which country would you see as the technology leaders in sick and gun? So uh, I don't uh, see a, a, a special uh, uh, country, but I would say as, as a region, Europe is extremely well positioned in SIG uh, with ST, Infineon and Bosch. Uh, more than 50% of the uh, global market is covered by these three, uh, these three companies. So that's uh, and they are producing in Europe. 
uh, that's and uh, when uh, it comes to GAN, uh, the picture is different. It's uh, a much more frag fragmented market, but I see Europe also in the lead uh, technology wise. There we have the big companies like uh, Infineon, but also small and smart startup companies like Cambridge GAN devices and the vibrant ecosystem of research labs like Fraunhofer and uh, CEA Leti. And, and, and they are uh, also very active in this, uh, in, in, in this field. Okay. This is interesting because it, I've been thinking that maybe the introduction of these new technology nodes might be used as an opportunity to reshore some of the semiconductor manufacturing from Asia. Do you think this will happen? Do you see this happening or not really? I mean, Europe has higher taxes and stricter regulations. Um, I think uh, from the front end, uh, perspective, front-end manufacturing, chip, chip manufacturing, uh, Europe, uh, here in Europe, we do not have to reshore it because we already have it here. We have Infineon in Villar, we have ST in Catania, we have Nexperia in Hamburg, uh, Vichy in, in, in Wales, and there are a lot of different others. Um, what I'm really missing is back-end uh, capabilities, um, packaging uh, capabilities here in Europe. This is done all in Far East. And this is, to me, the missing link for a really uh, the, to have the full supply chain within Europe. Okay. So this is so you think it is mainly on the back end the problem. Yeah. And and, and when you look at, at, at an Xperia issue, it's an it's a, a purely back end issue because the chips are fabricated here in Europe and in, in, in Hamburg and in Manchester, then shipped to China to get packaged, and then they are stuck there because China won't let them out. This is this is the issue we have at the moment with Nixperia. And do you dare to take a prediction what will happen in the next step? Do you think, I mean, it is difficult. I mean, if you look at it, the, the Chinese side in a way is winning because, I mean, you've got all these automotive manufacturers fleeing. What do you think will happen in the next step? Uh, well, they have uh, uh, different options. They have uh, the option to, to uh, uh, see what the Dutch government and the Chinese government uh, are, are uh, 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 in, in a discussion that the one part and the uh, other part is to uh, look for a, a second source and to to uh, requalify probably a second source um but at the end of the day when i look at the at the at european chips act and all that stuff they are looking at uh, chip manufacturing front end manufacturing and I miss the back end in the uh, European uh, Chips Act. Okay, then I thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you would like to add, except for your great newsletter, which I want to mention once again, I'll also mention it in the introduction, but is there anything you would like to add or you would like to say? No, not really, it, but it was great to have uh, this uh, chat with you. I'm and very honored and it was, thank you for making it possible so quickly. It was literally within five hours. Thank you again a million, Ralph, also in the name of all my viewers. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. And with that, I wanted to once again say thank you both to Ralph and to you all for listening. Down here, please like, 
subscribe and comment so that the channel can grow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.